The Golden State Warriors dynasty hangs in the balance, mainly because of Draymond's indefinite suspension and Clay's offensive struggles, even though he has picked it up considerably lately. But if there's any silver lining to any of these, the absence of Dre and the unpredictable play of Clay has given a ton of opportunities for the young guns to showcase their stuff. Pajimski, TJD, and Kuminga have been playing solid basketball as of late, and they're actually the reason why the dubs are gaining a bit of momentum right now, with winning some of their last few games by making key defensive stops in the most crucial moments of the game. Three seconds, Shaden Sharp to put it up and out, and it's an offensive foul anyway. It's Tatum. In this video, I'll be talking about the solid play of the Dubs Young Guns and how they've been stepping up as of late. Now first, let's talk about Brandon Pajimski. In their last five games, Pods was averaging 11.6 points, 6.6 .6 rebounds, and 3.6 assists on 46.2% shooting from the field, and 33.3% from three while logging a plus 13 during that stretch. Against Phoenix, the Dubs' 19th overall pick unleashed 20 points and 11 rebounds, together with 5 assists, and versus Brooklyn, he racked up a solid stat line of 19-5-5 and five to help the Dubs get a much-needed win. Now, one of the reasons why Kerr has entrusted Pods with a lot of playing time as of late is because his playmaking along with his high basketball IQ fits perfectly into the Dubs read and react system. I mean, here's the Dubs running their split action with Pods taking the place of Draymond. He gives the initial entry pass to Looney, and then after that, he sets a screen to free up Steph. But after recognizing that Dinwiddie got lost in the shuffle defensively, Pods reacted quickly by diving inside, and Looney found him for the easy lay-in. Now, during the final moments of the game, Pods is there along with the vets. But instead of handing the ball to them, this rookie is confident enough to hold the ball, and he even made the game-winning play by giving the ball to Steph, who then delivered the dagger to ice the game. On the defensive end, Pods has been pretty active as well by playing the passing lanes and grabbing a bunch of steals in the process. But one of the big stops that he made was against the Blazers, when he put his body in harm's way just to get the W. Down by two, Sharp pushed the ball here with 3.7 seconds left on the clock. Knowing that Sharp is a high flyer, Pods positioned himself at his launching pad and drew a charge, which sealed the game for good. With his strong performances as of late, Pods is slowly becoming a permanent fixture in the Dubs regular rotation, because not only can he play on both ends, but he's also a stat sheet stuffer that has a high basketball IQ with a great feel for the game. Anyways, aside from things that I just mentioned, there's another area where Pods has been making a huge impact for the Dubs this season, according to Steve Kerr. How much is he just doing the little things on, uh, on both ends that... That's why he's out there, you know. Um, he's, uh, uh, you know, one of the reasons we want him out there with Steph is to give us another playmaker, another ball handler. Uh, the play you referenced, I thought, was one of the biggest of the game where um, Steph got trapped. He kicked it to Brandon, and Brandon found Clay on the wing for that three. Huge play. And uh, that's an example of why he's out there. Um, three steals. Um, you know, he's just in the mix. He's like one of those guys who's just always in the right spot because he sees the game and he anticipates. So Brandon is, um, you know, earning his stripes here in his rookie year. The little things that Pods does, like grabbing rebounds here and there and making the right plays at the right time, have really been a difference maker for the Dubs. And speaking of difference makers, Trace Jackson Davis is also one of the young guys who has been playing big for the Dubs, especially on the defensive end. In the first couple of games, TJD hadn't really been playing that much, mainly because he'd been pushed to the far end of the bench with Saric, Looney, Kaminga, and Draymond all competing for minutes in the front court. But with Draymond's suspension and Looney struggling as of late, Steve Kerr had no choice but to put his second round pick on the floor and trust that he'll deliver. And so far in the last couple of games, TJD showed that Kerr has made the right decision. Against Boston and Portland, TJD averaged a double-double of 12 points, 10.5 rebounds, along with two assists and one steal on 68.8% shooting from the field, with a plus 33 plus-minus rating. 
Over the years, the dubs lacked that legit pick and roll threat that could take away some attention to Steph offensively. But this season, it seems that they've found those qualities in TJD as he's turning out to be a pretty reliable pick and roll partner as a rim roller. TJD is the perfect two-man game partner with CP3, as he knows how to set up solid screens to free up the ball handler. And when two guys picked up CP3, the point guard just threw a lob pass to his roll man, cause he knows that TJD can finish above the rim with his hops. Now, off of dribble handoffs, TJD also excels in this situation, cause whenever there's a miscommunication on defense, the shooter can simply find TJD on the roll time and time again. Anyway, on the defensive end, TJD also uses that same hops and length to stalk his prey once they enter the shaded lane. Here's Scoot Henderson coming at full speed downhill. Despite the change of direction and how fast he was, TJD is still able to time him and reflect his shot away. And as a help defender, TJD is also equally effective as he can get there in time using his incredible anticipation and timing. Though he wasn't part of the regular rotation in the first couple of games, TJD's patience is now paying off. And according to him, here's his approach to the lack of opportunity that was given to him. Um, just always being ready when your name is called. Um, I saw Dario got three fouls, and um, coach looked at me, he said, call my name, and then just um, getting the most out of the opportunity, just playing hard, um, trying to help um, do whatever it takes for my team to win. What was specifically working for you, you think? Um, I think just um, coverages, just trying to alter every shot, and then just um, on the offensive end of the floor, um, being a lob threat. Um, screening, getting guys open, and then just making the right plays in the in the dive. Anyway, the other young gun who's been locked in recently is Jonathan Kuminga. In their last seven games, Kuminga has consistently scored in double figures and averaged 15.3 points, 5.6 assists, one steal on 58.9% shooting from the field, and an impressive 47.4% shooting from distance. When former Warrior David Lee suffered a hamstring injury in the final preseason game of 2014, it allowed Draymond Green to blossom in his third year, and since then, he never relinquished the starting role back to Lee. Fast forward nearly 10 years later, history might repeat itself with Draymond being indefinitely suspended while JK's game continues to elevate and evolve in year three. Although he doesn't possess the same level of basketball IQ that Draymond has, Kuminga has more upside offensively as he's a better scorer than him and, on the flip side, we see glimpses of him thriving on individual defense with his length and raw athleticism. Here against Jalen Brown, Kuminga showcases his quick first step and explosiveness before capping it off with a strong flush. Now, when the game is on the line, JK takes the tough assignment and defends Jason Tatum in the final possession of regulation. As good as Tatum is as a scorer, JK locked him up and didn't give him an inch until he just took a tough jumper with JK all over him. We all know that Kerr is quite adamant about letting rookies play during high pressure moments because of their inexperience, which often leads to turnovers and bad decisions, especially in late game situations. But with Draymond out and Clay as well as Wiggins struggling, Steve Kerr had no choice but to give the young guns their opportunity to shine, and so far, Pods, TJD, and Kaminga are earning the respect of their locker room with their solid play as of late. With things not shaping up the way they wanted it to be this early in the season, the dubs can rely on their young guns to turn things around for them, and as you see in the previous clips, they're stepping to the plate and showing up every time their number is called. And ultimately, their energy, effort, and hustle have been lifting the dubs big time, especially during stretches where the starters and the usual suspects couldn't deliver. The Warriors are gaining steam right now, with a cool winning streak as of this video, all thanks to the stellar play of their young guns. With this said, there's definitely no reason for Steve Kerr to restrict their minutes anymore, with the way they're contributing on both ends, cause at this point of the season, the dubs must now do whatever it takes to get back on track and eventually save their crumbling dynasty.